Um, welcome to session three of KUA. Um, ever, it looks like most of you have your cameras on, which is awesome. Um, like I was saying before, I can't believe it's already the third week of KUA. I feel like the summer is already flying by, um, but we're so excited to have you all here. So tonight we're going to be talking about, um, or the theme of tonight really, is vision into action. So you'll learn why that's the title um, in a few moments, but um, that's the theme of tonight. So right now um, we're in summer 2020. So it's June 17th um, and you know, we're all a few weeks into our summer and just getting adjusted and figuring out our schedules. Um, so, Let's just play like a little game here. So let's rewind six months. So at, or six months ago, um, you're probably on winter break or just getting back from winter break. And um, you might have had some other things planned for um, today, for now, six months from then. So um, six months ago, you might have been um, interviewing for an internship this summer or had a job that was lined up and you're banking on that job and you were ready to work and you're excited about it and you had everything planned out um, and like there wasn't a worry about the security of that position at all um, but you know you were you were ready for that to come you know six months from then so we fast forward to today and um, so, you know, now we're in summer 2020 and there's going to be three um, kind of like things or scenarios that might have happened. So the first one is going to be, I had an internship or a job in the summer of 2020. Um, another one might be, my internship fell through, but I tried. I had something lined up, but it fell through. So I'm just gonna hang out this summer and enjoy. Um, or the third thing might be my internship fell through or I was unable to find an opportunity due to the circumstances, but I created my own product. So, um, some of you might also have internships or jobs in addition to Kula, um, and you're doing Kula as something extra to help build your resume. Or, um, sorry, I'm getting the group name messages right now. Um, to help build your resume or build your skills. Um, and you know, the other some of the other Kula members um, might have had you know, an internship or a job that fell through. And they're here to create their own products and create their own experiences for the summer, which is amazing. Um, so what I think is gonna be a very common um, interviewing question um, next summer is going to be, what did you do during the summer of 2020? So this question um, could go a few ways, like we had talked about in this slide here. So um, maybe your answer is you had an internship or a job, which is great. Um, but maybe something fell through, um, or you also may have created your own product. So I'm going to do a little exercise with you all. Let me try to get back here. I'm not the best with Zoom. Um, hold on. Oh, here we go. Okay. So um, I'm going to ask one of you to ask me what I did during the summer of 2020. Let's see. Um, Colin. Colin DeVico. Is that how you say your last name? Yes, it is. Okay, so 
Um, Colin, ask me what I did during the summer of 2020. Carney, what did you do, do during the summer of 2020? Okay, so, and sorry, just to preference this, um, you're my employer, or you are um, interviewing me for a job. So, uh, sorry, can you ask me that again? Yeah. So, Carney, what did you do during the summer of 2020? Okay, uh, Mr. DeVico, so, I actually had an internship for the summer of 2020, but you know, given the circumstances, it actually fell through. So um, I decided to just kind of hang out and enjoy the summer. And um, you know, I thought maybe this summer I would be able to get more experience and just take a year off. So if you were an employer going to hire me, what like? What might you think, uh, Matthew Swenson? What might you think of that response? Uh, probably that even though, you know, even though there were um, extremely rare circumstances happening in 2020, the fact that you um, spent the summer sort of chilling may suggest that, um, you might not be as motivated in the job. Absolutely, that is a perfect answer. So um, let's do this again. So Jordan, can you ask me the same question? Like what did you do during the summer of 2020? Yeah. Okay, well, what did you do during the summer? <laughs> So, um, okay, Jordan, so actually what happened was my internship fell through. I had an amazing um, digital marketing um, internship set up in Boston that I was really excited about. Um, but given the circumstances, the funding wasn't there and um, I was unable to, to work um, as an intern in Boston this summer. But instead, I, I actually did some more research to see, you know, if I could apply for other positions. And unfortunately, it was, it was too late. Um, however, I did stumble upon a program called Kula. And through Kula, I was able to um, go to a weekly workshop and learn about career skills and learn about um, all sorts of different things. And then I was also able to create a product of my own. So I created a blog and multiple times a week, I would write about my experience um, with COVID um, and how it affected my summer and um, you know my the job that I had. Um, that I had hoped I was gonna get and um, about you know, what I was doing to, to better myself. So um, that's what I did in the summer of 2020. Wow. So let's see, Michael, Michael G. Hi, what are your thoughts on that response versus the first one? Uh, I think it shows that you actually put in the effort to try to um, turn a bad a bad situation to the best possible outcome you could make it. And it showed that you were willing to pivot and um, try to decide uh, different ways to stay productive during a tough time. Amazing. Yeah, so what everyone here needs to um, think about is that is what you are all doing. Like, that is what you're gonna sound like in an interview when um, the employer is asking you these questions. Like, you are gonna have an amazing answer. Um, and it just is gonna show that, um, you know, even with all these challenges, you were able um, to persevere and you went out on your own and you found alternative options. 
Um, and I think it's really important that you recognize that and then that you're able to talk about that in an interview. All right, so moving along. Okay, so the next question I have um, is, sorry, what problems do you want to solve in the world? So I'm gonna open this up for discussion again. Um, let's see. All right, so anyone can talk. Um, so what, like, let's just talk about um, some problems that we want to solve in the world. I'll open up a doc and we can write different things. One second. Who wants to go first? Do I have to call on people or do you guys want to talk? Vanessa, my friend from Menden. What, um, what is one thing that you would like to change in the world? Um, one thing I'd really like to change, so I study fashion merchandising and I'm really passionate about um, sustainable fashion. So one thing that I've always really wanted to make a difference in is the amount of waste caused by the fashion industry and kind of like the consumer mindset around how we buy and um, like get rid of clothes. Actually, going right off of that, I'm actually a fashion design major. So oh, I think, um, I know, how cool. Um, <laughs> how, going off of like what um, you just said, instead of like the consumer mindset, um, more of the like design mindset, I guess, yeah. would be having um, zero waste designs beforehand. So like obviously um, not every design like could always be zero waste, but figuring out how to um, minimize fabric waste and what to do with the other fabric scraps and how to either recycle or create something new out of them um, would be something that I'm passionate about. No, absolutely. I think that's a huge part of it too, is the way that clothes are made too. Thinking about the waste that goes along with that. Especially in um, just like the development process, like the waste that goes on there, like how to transfer that over to like other projects, especially mm -hmm. if you're working with the same company for a long time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I also like sustainable clothing and all that. And um, I'm trying to start my own sustainable clothing line. And I think it's more about also bring the mindset of sustainable fashion to like mainstream markets and seeing like big companies to reevaluate how they produce and market their materials to show that it is possible to have this sustainable brand on a large scale. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that, Miles. I think um, a lot of it has to do with the marketing and even fashion influencers on Instagram and how they're constantly um, showing products and uh, how they're they're just wasting tons of clothes and they'll order clothes they'll try them on and show them off. And then um, I think most of them will donate them, but um, it just, I feel like it just puts out a kind of a false impression of like what fashion should be. And is it wearing a top once and then um, throwing it away? Like probably not, that's, that's really not how it should be. Um, and you know, the other thing is like making people think like, oh my goodness, like I can't wear, I just wore this shirt last week. Like what if I wear it again? Like what if, what if I'm on Kula and I'm wearing a dress one week and then I wear it again the next Wednesday? What if they see like, oh my gosh, is that embarrassing? Like, no, like that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think it has, it needs to change in the marketing. And I think the bigger companies um, need to start talking about it first 
but um, yeah, I think that's super interesting, especially how the three of you all kind of had um, a similar um, thought process with it. So um, Niles, Vanessa, and Marissa, maybe you could um, collaborate on a project this summer. Maybe that might be um, something that you can all do. I think that might be really cool. All right, let's see. So um, is it Cass? Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So um, what are you looking to do this summer? Or sorry, what are, what problems do you see in the world? And what are you looking to solve? Or what would you like to solve? Um, so I'm an international business major and I think it would be cool to somehow find a way to link students from all over the globe um, who have like similar interests and similar goals because um, I have yet to be able to study abroad so I see that a lot of students who study abroad are able to collaborate with students from other countries however sometimes like um, it's just you don't have that network of the whole globe we tend to just network with our own country and I think it'd be really cool to create either a platform or another method of communication from different students over the globe. Yeah, so I think that's super interesting. Um, so that's a thought that I've had um, a lot, actually, especially recently. Like, how can we connect students um, like we do on Kula? but in a larger scale. Um, and something I was talking to Adam about today actually was um, LinkedIn and how um, my experience, I'm younger, um, and my experience on LinkedIn is um, seeing a lot of CEOs and older generations posting about their businesses or about their experiences. And I don't see as much from college students. Um, so I think it would be really neat to develop um, something like LinkedIn, but for, for a younger generation, um, especially to connect and um, talk about common interests and um, maybe you know, spark a conversation and come up with a really neat idea um, so yeah, I think that's, that's an awesome, um, you know, thing to think about. And maybe this summer you could create a website and, or a social media page and get some feedback and really see like, um, you know, how you could do that or just to start, um, you know, start getting that conversation going. Um, does anyone have any suggestions like what the best platform to get um, that conversation going might be? Um, I can speak to this. Um, I recently joined like a couple of Slack communities and I think those are really nice ways for like intern level students to connect because you have like different channels and different ways of like sort of managing um, sort of like reminders and, and sort of uh, integrations and, and stuff like that. I'm not a very sort of Slack expert, but that's just something that came across my mind when I was listening to you guys talk about that. Yeah, and um, the thing that like I was thinking is mainly, mainly creating like, I like the Slack communication because the it's more of like you're talking, not in a business way, but you guys are, you know, just going back and forth and kind of collaborating off of each other. Um, Cause the thing that I find like super cool about business is that every country has different business methods and different ways they handle um, processing and, you know, creating um, like products. So being an international student or international student, an international business student or any major really that you want to like go abroad and stuff, it's good to like know the practices of that country. So to be able to talk to somebody who's learning um, in school would be super cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, 
I feel like um, there has to be, you know, some way that we can do this um, and just start the conversation and start working towards, uh, you know, accomplishing something like that. Uh, I would love to follow if you start an Instagram page or a Facebook group or um, a Slack channel, I would definitely follow along. Um, and something else that I want you all to start doing is sharing um, once you've started your projects, whether it's a blog or a website um, or anything else, we really want you to share it in the chat um, and get the group me going. And um, I think it would be really neat to um, showcase what everyone's doing and check out um, and support everyone. So, um, all right, let's see. So let's get a couple more on here. A couple more things. Let's see, should I call on someone? Um, Thomas? I, <laughs> would you like to share? There we go. Uh, I think one of my main, one of the, I guess, jobs I was thinking about going into was to be a teacher or a professor. So one of the main things I wanted to be able to change is make mathematics or statistics type classes more acceptable or much more fun, relatable. Two, two students who are both like, math oriented and the ones who are taking it just because they have to for their major or because the school wants them to take like a minimum of three to four math classes. So just make it more fun, enjoyable and not just the slow, boring class that a lot of people consider it to be. Yeah, so Thomas, um, do you remember when we talked about this in our vetting call? I think so. You're putting off a math class, right? Yes. So um, in college, I was I had put off a freshman math class um, from my freshman year until my senior year because um, math scares me um, and it is just not my strength, one of my strengths. So I had put it off, but I'm. Um, yeah, I think that would be awesome to make it a little bit more um, fun and enjoyable. And um, I know in college, I had a professor um, that taught statistics and he made it um, really interesting because we talked about airlines in real life situations um, where the stats could be applied. And it definitely made more sense and was more enjoyable. Um, so yeah, so I think that is really neat. Um, let's see, Caitlin, would you like to share? Yeah, I was actually thinking like along this um, similar like education lines. Um, I'm not sp specifically sure how um, it would be implemented, but like something to bring um, more like awareness to health starting at like in schooling as opposed to like um, like the current standard where like a lot of schools don't have very like in-depth health classes, whether that be like mental health, sexual health, um, like physical health, or even like, um, like healthy, um, like dietary type things. So I think like just all of those things to be, um, incorporated into education more. Yeah, so I think that's really important. Um, I know when I was younger, you know, we had talked like briefly about um, drugs and sex and um, some other things, but we didn't really go into detail about like mental health or, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we have a chat going here that I didn't even see. Um, but I think, you know, there's definitely um not as much time being spent in a in health classes um as there should be like i think i might have had two years of it in middle school um 
And I think that's definitely something that um, would be great to have from elementary through high school um, and really, you know, make it become something where students, um, you can learn about like eating healthy and healthy habits and, you know, what they should be doing. Um, so yeah, I think that's a great point that you bring up. Um, so we are going to transition back um, to the PowerPoint in just a minute, but I wanted to ask some of you like what, what you wanted to change in the world because I wanna get you thinking about your projects. So um, I know it's kind of you know, difficult to come up with a project right on the spot. Um, you know, if I, let's say Larry, um, if I asked you like, without any warning, um, and I just said like, hey, like, what do you wanna do for a project? You might not necessarily have an idea that comes to mind. Um, but if you start thinking about problems in the world, um, it might become easier, um, you know, to think about like what you would like to solve. Um, so Larry, what's like one thing um, I mean, that, I, did, I, I knew, I do kind of, um, it def, def, that question definitely gets you thinking. Um, I mean, that's, that that's help a, a you? tough like, question in general. Um, you know, I mean, who, I, I mean, I guess there's things that I'm interested in, but who really knows what exactly you want to do in life? You know, that's kind of where I stand. Um, you know, and I'm kind of open to kind of, I like to keep my mind open when it comes to like learning different subjects and all, and all that. Um, I'm in an internship now where I've been networking with uh, people within the company and, and they, they have really emphasized to kind of keep your, keep your mind open to um, the different areas of the company. They want you to reach out of your department and kind of, um, you know, explore, explore what you like, because maybe you can, bring skill sets that you have to another department that wouldn't even think of like utilizing the, like your skill set. Um, and, you know, I just admit it, that really goes a long way when you're working in a corporate company. So, um, you know, just get, just making that name for yourself is probably the hardest part and then doing that can kind of really, you know, get your name out there. Um, so I feel that's definitely a challenge. Um, that I've experienced or that I can kind of see com coming into play. Um, I guess that would be my, my problem that I would like to solve in the world is kind of, you know, finding a way how, I don't know, how to kind of implement that, you know? Yeah, so um, I think you, you bring up a really interesting point. Um, so I think, what everyone needs to do too is like whatever they're um they feel strongly about or um an issue that they've come across is a great starting point for a project this summer so um we're going to transition to the powerpoint and talk about um different types of projects so okay. So, um, sorry, this was like the next slide. So let's hear from you, your ideas, your thoughts, where to start. Um, so before we get into specifics, I'm actually gonna come back to you guys um, and see oops, if I can figure it out. Um, here we go. And see, have any of you, I didn't ask this question yet, have any of you started a project? I have a project I've been kind of been working on um, prior to this, um, but I do have it if, if, you know, I'm kind of open to, to sharing my screen and just kind of letting everybody see it. You know, I'll, I'll take, I don't know if anyone here is interested in, in web development or anything technology, technology like wise. Um, yeah, if, I'll, let's I'll see how many. Or any 
even if someone can help me do something, I don't know, but you know, at least putting it out there, if I can kind of connect with someone, that would be great. Does, is anyone else interested in this kind of thing? I'm personally they, building a website or I've been learning to kind of, I've been taking a couple of online courses on it. Um, and I'm just trying to develop my technology skills as, as much as possible or as quickly as possible, I guess. Is anyone else looking to create a website? Yeah, actually, um, I'm a computer science student. Um, so one of the languages that I've mostly been focusing on focusing on is mostly backend C++ and Python type stuff. Um, but so this summer, um, actually in talking to Adam, one of the things that I really want to learn just to have another tool under my tool belt is web development um, and React and JavaScript and that kind of stuff. So I'm so kind of in the same place where I'm starting from scratch. I don't actually know how to do it yet, but right. definitely like building a personal website or something like that is on the list for things that I want to do this summer. Yeah. I'm in the same spot too. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of using the personal website as also like a marketing tool for myself, as well as just like a chance to kind of, you know, like you said, you, I'm not really sure how to use some of these technologies yet, but use it as an opportunity to kind of build those skills and kind of learn how to do that type of stuff. So, yeah, exactly. I think that's super interesting. Um, I think everyone should have a personal website. Um, as a way to market themselves. I think it's really neat. Um, if you spend a couple hours working on one, uh, you can definitely, um, you know, make some pretty good progress. Um, yeah, farther than you think. <laughs> yeah, it just, it takes a little bit of time. Um, but I also wanted to provide you all with some resources um, to a little bit later. Um, is anyone else working on a project right now that they want to share? Um, Not quite. Oh. I, I can. Uh, okay. so I am actually working with Colin DeVico um, and him and I are starting our own small and it's taking time but we're trying to start our own starter up ice cream business. Um, and it was, it's just something small that we kind of want to be able to use when we go back to school, um, just to, you know, have something and try to see if we enjoy it and also practice different business methods to see what works. Um, so it's more of like an experiment, but if it works, why not run with it? Um, wow. So how are you going about doing this? Um, so fortunately, him and I are in the same area, so we're able to work together. Um, so basically what we've been doing is testing a bunch of flavors. Um, you know, we talk to my family, we talk to my friends and our friends, and obviously we're going to start reaching out to our community to kind of taste our ice cream and to kind of see like what is the best flavors, what people are looking for. And then we're gonna try different methods of distribution um, and different methods of marketing to kind of see what works when it comes to, sell to sales. Very cool. Are you local to Providence by any chance? Not right now, <laughs> um, but that's when, um, that's where we really wanna sell is we go to Johnson and Wales uh, oh, very so cool. Hoping that we can create like more affordable ice cream because sometimes like Ben and Jerry's is so good and we're probably never going to compare to them, but like it can get kind of pricey for college students. Uh, so like creating a sweet treat and making it natural so there's not like artificial flavors and things like that and they know what's in it. Um, a lot of students are like really gravitating towards gravitating towards us and they're really excited to like try our ice cream when we go back to campus. Yeah, I mean, yes. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna um, say there's an ice cream shop near where I live where they make it like right in front of you. Um, so you like you specify like which specific ingredients you want and then they'll use like a base of vanilla and they'll like mix it right in front of you. Um, and give it to you. So like, you know exactly what's being put in uh, to your ice cream. 
Yeah, um, we've actually done that. So my brother, um, my nephew had a birthday party and he kind of hit us with a few flavors that we had to try. So we had to last minute um, run to the store and try to get like all the ingredients to create these flavors he wanted. And it was really cool to see like what came out well and what came out like not so well um because he threw some like interesting flavors at us like we made a a blueberry ice cream with like a cinnamon uh, brown sugar granola mixed into it and that was super cool because it tastes like a breakfast thing but it was ice cream so i mean we're trying fun different things and it's it's really fun to like put your creativity into something as like like ice cream because everybody likes ice cream so no matter what, everybody can say like, oh, that's good, or no, that's not my favorite. Yeah, that is so cool. Um, I hope that when you're back to school, I'm still in the office here and I can stop by. Um, but that is awesome. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint and then um, talk about a couple different resources um, for you all to write down, um, that could be very helpful. So, let's see. so the first one is called, can you guys see that? Um, content production, um, not, sorry. The first one's called Adobe Spark um, and it's for content production purposes. So, uh, if you go to spark.adobe.com, it should pop right up and I will actually click onto it now. Just one second. Okay. So this is it. Um, I was newly introduced to it, but essentially what you can do is create social media posts within minutes. Um, and make them look super high-end and professional and neat, um, which might be a great option for someone that's looking to do some content creation this summer. Um, also, there's a web pages option. Um, so I think there's some different templates that you could use. And um, you can also make short, vi short videos through the site too. So I, th I think this marketing is pretty cool, but um, so you can create it in minutes. Anyone can shine. It's super easy to use. Um, and then you can also just share whatever you make straight from the platform. So it's really easy. And they also have tons of templates um, so that you can click on them and get inspired. It just seems like a really neat resource to use and it's the best part is that it's free. Um, some of these websites can be pretty costly, especially if you're just, you know, kind of beginning and experimenting with it. Um, the next resource is for bloggers um, and it's called medium.com. Has anyone heard of these by the way? Any of these? Yeah. I know it's medium. medium. One second. I need to get back. Oops. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so what have your experiences for those who have used um, either Medium or um, the Adobe um, content creation web page? Like what were your experiences like with either of those? Did someone mention it? Were you guys, did someone say that they had used it? I mentioned yeah. that I, I've seen Medium articles pop up before. Um, that's about it. Okay. I've never used the Adobe Spark though. Yeah, Larry, I started using it um, a couple weeks ago, actually. I was newly introduced to it. And I was amazed at like how quick I could create content and make it look like really professional um, and like put together. Now, um, do you have to 
does it automatically post it for you or do they have kind of like um i could kind of benefit from using a uh kind of creating a template for how i want a website to look you know kind of putting in the different components that go into it you know and making it just kind of having a picture of what i need to build and then from there build it i don't know i I'll, i could also take a look at it i don't know if you happen to know if yeah, yeah so Larry, I actually have another resource, um, and it's Wix, um, which okay. I have also used before. Um, it's for website building, so Wix.com, W-I-X.com, um, and it's super easy to um, also, how about this design? It's so pretty. Um, but it's super easy to use and you can create websites for fun. Um, and it, the best part about this website is that you can do it pretty quickly. Um, so I actually love Wix. That would be, probably be my number one recommendation for creating a website, um, even like a personal um, website if you're interested in doing that. This is probably the best option for you. So Larry, maybe you might wanna try Wix and look at some of their templates. Yeah, definitely. I was just kind of looking for a place where I can kind of, you know, I know the aesthetics of a of a website go a long way. So kind of seeing how everything looks at, in, in like the computer view or from a screen view is kind of important. Oh, absolutely. There's so many things too that you need to think about. Um, and working with Pangea, and you know, being on content marketing calls and our team calls, um, I've really you know learned so much about um, what goes into making a website and what's appealing to users, um, and just like really some interesting components um, that I would never have thought about before um, I started working at Pangea. So. Um, now I kind of want to talk to you all again um, and see if you need any ideas. Um, hold on. So does any is anyone having trouble coming up with an idea for their project? So everyone has an idea for their project already. Everyone knows what they're going to do. Let's see. Okay. Does anyone have anything like different they might want to share um, that hasn't been mentioned? Like something that might not be a website or a blog? Um, Actually, I do, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for like my project, I actually um basically my goal was to have something that i can add to my digital portfolio since um i'm still like in the process of like making my own website but i didn't want that um to be like the project for um this course but i wanted to have um, a project that i can eventually then upload onto it so um i'm actually in this other class right now that's all about uh, fashion and footwear. Um, so I've been coming up like with designs and like pitching those to different like buyers and talking about um, basically like from like how it goes like designing to then being like uh, bought and sold like through a company. But what I wanted to then add to this for my own uh, creative practices was um, doing like an animation or different sketches of like uh, clothes that would be paired with the shoes with maybe like some textile samples that I can um, hand make and then um, comprising that into like a little portfolio like kit that I could upload digitally. Um, so it would still be focused on like sustainability um, and customizability, um, but it's like my jumping off point was the first project that I was working on and like how to then push it um, so that when you look on my online portfolio, you'll see how like I can take one thing and keep like transforming it into something else. Wow, that sounds really neat. And I also love that um, you didn't want to stop with 
with just your website um, and you wanted more of a challenge. And I think um, there's a lot of like different things that you can do, um, you know, with a website, but um, you know, you went even further and, um, you know, thought about some other elements that you could work on to, which is great. Um, I think, you know, this summer and what we want you to get out of this program is um, to really get creative and uh, experiment. Why not? You know, it's the summer of 2020 and you have um, a couple more months before you're going back to school. Um, you might as well just try things, like try things that you've never tried before. Try things that um, make you nervous and um, that you might be a little bit uncomfortable with. Something that I've been doing recently, um, which I talked with someone, I forget who it was, but I talked with someone about um, doing this. And what I actually started doing was I made a private YouTube channel and I just practiced talking, public speaking, um, because in the first Kula, I probably said um about 50 times in two minutes. And it was so embarrassing when I watched myself. So what I did was I created that YouTube channel and uh, I, I was going to say um again. Uh, but what I did was I created the YouTube channel and I've been working on it and it's been getting better. So maybe if you want to work on your public speaking, maybe that's something that you might try is making a YouTube channel and just talking to yourself. But when you're looking at yourself face to face in a camera, it can be a little bit awkward, kind of like public speaking kind of is. And it's only going to prepare you for the fall semester and your working situation next summer. You know, at work, you might be an amazing public speaker by next summer. And maybe that's something that you worked on during the summer of 2020. And that's another thing you could talk about in an interview setting. Or maybe on those YouTube channels, you're talking, um, you're doing like a mock interview and you're answering questions that maybe you had written down before you turned on the camera and you're trying to answer them without saying like or um uh, quite a few times. So I always go back to like or um. But uh, yeah, definitely you can try something like that. You know, it's definitely not traditional, but could be an interesting option for you. So we have a few more minutes left. Uh, trying to decide what we should do with them. Is there anything anyone wants to talk about with Kula or um, let's hear from someone that we haven't heard from tonight. Let's see. Is it Faraz? Yep. Is that? Yep. How do you pronounce your name? Uh, Faraz, you got it right. Oh, amazing. Okay. Faraz, what are you working on right now? What is your um, project? Yeah, so I'm working on um, basically des designing an HVAC system. Uh, I'm an engineering student um, for for my house, really, because uh, my 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 house doesn't have we don't have central AC, so I figured why not design one for my own house. That is so cool. I bet your parents are pretty psyched that you're you're doing that for them. Uh, the only issue is that um, in order to actually make it like realistically work i would need to get like the actual blueprints for the house which my i don't think my parents have and uh i think i can get them from the county clerk's office but that's closed because of the pandemic so <laughs> i can kind of get something going like i i can adjust the like the actual dimensions every everything later on but i can more or less do all the the hard work now and just adjust the little things later is that cost effective at all or uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of doing this for fun. I know, I know Eric getting central AC is very expensive, but yeah. you know, if you yep. can kind of design it yourself, you might be able to save a lot of money, which is definitely pretty interesting. Maybe. Uh, this is so actually, I was supposed to do this for an internship. So I'm just kind of piggybacking off of what I was supposed to be doing. Interesting. Wow. For us, that is amazing. 
Um, and that's definitely something that you should talk about in an interview. Oh yeah. yeah. Like what a cool story to tell. <laughs> yeah, you're def they're definitely going to remember Faraz. Faraz was the one that, you know, designed an, you know, an HVAC unit for his house. Um, so cool. Let's see, who else have we not heard from that's on the camera? Uh, is it Juan? Yeah, hi, Carney. Hello, uh, how are you? Doing fantastic, thank you. I like uh, the pink shirt. Thanks. It's so fun and happy. Very, very nice, I appreciate it. Um, this summer, I, I've been working on a lot of different things of trying to figure out what I really want to focus my time on. Um, a big thing I was trying to do, I just graduated um, my senior year at Ohio State University. Um, and one big thing about going to a primarily white institution, which I am a white Latin student, um, but I come from a Latino background and from a lot of Latinos that I've met, it's really hard to find a path towards a career that you're excited about because of a lack of mentorship and a lack of people in higher positions that you can see yourself in. And while a lot of companies are doing a great job of diversity and inclusion within like their uh, new positions, there's a lack of diversity and inclusion within like the top level positions that you can really see yourself in. Um, and a lot of that comes from mentorship and education and just communication about that. And so one big thing I've been trying to work on is how can we build a mentorship project or a program that helps students of different backgrounds that aren't in the majority to really see themselves in high up positions that they can get excited about. Um, and whether it's a mentorship program or a career service program, whatever that can be, could be really helpful. So I haven't really decided what that's going to look like yet, but I'm working on that. That is amazing. It sounds like um, that is going to be a great project for this summer. And it's certainly something that we need to be seeing a lot more of um, today. So. I would also uh, try to look online and see if there's any resources online uh, or any connections that you can make. If you go on LinkedIn, you might be able to find some people and see if they're doing missions kind of similar to that this summer. Um, I would definitely urge you to check that out. But even just starting a social media page and starting, like I've said, a hundred times on this call, just starting conversation about it um, and, you know, just progressing from there. But starting a social media page is a great place to start, I think. So Absolutely. that is great. Thank you, Thank you for it. sharing. Awesome. Okay. Um, all right, we'll do one more. Miles, would you like to share with us what you're working on this summer? Um. Well, I'm working on, I want to start my own um, hemp hoodie uh, business. So I've been working on developing the design for that. And I'm waiting right now on the physical prototype to be built. Um, I'm having a friend do that. So I'm just waiting on that. And I'm just doing as much research as possible on like the whole hemp uh, clothing market and just like the material, just like the material in general to learn as much as I can because I believe that I need to be very knowledgeable on what I'm selling on like every aspect of it to make sure that I can cover all the bases. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. I know um, from a sales perspective, you know, you need to really know your product and know what you're selling and be able to answer those tough questions um, that you might sometimes get that you don't really know how to answer, but um, it definitely helps to do your research so that you can try to answer most of them. Um, Casey, do you wanna talk on that at all, about knowing your product and sales? Casey is a sales whiz. She knows all the info about oh, that. Thank you, Barney. Yeah, I think it's, it's really important for you to know your product when you're selling because a lot of the times in sales, people aren't really buying the product. They're buying who they're, who is selling to them. So you have to really believe in your product. I know that you're concerned about sustainability. So if you're really knowledgeable about how sustainable your hemp hoodies are going to be and that passion comes across in your sales pitch, 
people people can buy a hoodie anywhere. You can buy a hoodie for any price, an expensive hoodie, a cheap hoodie, a hoodie made out of hemp, a hoodie made out of regular hoodie materials. But if you're confident in your product and you're very knowledgeable about exactly what it does, not only as the features of being a hoodie, but the mission behind your hoodie and how it's going to help the environment, then why wouldn't I want to buy your hoodie? And I do want to buy your hoodie. So get it going and you can take my email down, put me down for the first order list. I'll take one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the advice. So just Amazing. know about your product, be passionate about it and the right customers will come to you. I know that saying the customer is always right, but really it's the right customers will come to the right products if you have them. Absolutely. Thank you, Casey. I knew that. Um, I would, you know, I should reach out to you and see. Ooh, Dylan's clapping for you. Uh, I knew you'd have some great inspiration for Miles. So thank you for sharing. Awesome. All right. So it is nine o'clock on the dot. Thank you all for an amazing session. Oh, sorry. One quick thing. I got a quote to end the meeting. So I need to bring it up. Hold on. Um, one second. Oh, it, it looks like it's being covered. Okay. So this is the quote. So it says, work hard in silence. Let success be your noise. So I thought that was very fitting to end our conversation today and um you know really just in um you know in talking about our projects and what we're doing this summer in silence um and then our success when we're presenting these projects at the end of the summer um is really going to be the noise that we're making and um the impact that we're going to have on the world so I'm so proud of all of you and thank you for showing up and sticking around with me tonight.